So what a great day it is, isn't it? A day, yeah, yeah. It's a day of celebration. It's a day of partnership. It's a day of community. So thanks for being here, all of you. And I will tell you, get the word out that there's some good stuff happening with these partnerships. So my name is Daryl DeWald. I serve as the Executive Vice President of Health Sciences for Washington State University. The news that we're going to share this morning is exciting for WSU, for our new Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine, for Providence Sacred Heart, Providence Sacred Heart Children's Hospital, the region's healthcare industry, but more so, folks, for the citizens of the state of Washington for better health care. And that's what we're. I do want to acknowledge that there are a number of dignitaries here, excuse me, including Mayor Woodward, if you would, please just stand up. So we have David Condon here, if you would, please, if you'll stand up. <laughs> Shelley O'Quinn is here joining us from Inovia. <laughs> and then this is a team of folks because it's going to be Jared, Ryan, and others. So Patrick, if you would, from the Community Cancer Fund, the team, if you would please stand up for a minute. So we're going to endeavor to recognize the people that brought what we're talking about to bear. But what I'm going to say, folks, is today we celebrate, and it's a great day, but actually some would say this took years in the making. Others might even say this took decades in the making. So I'd like for you to think about this for a minute. There's pediatric residencies on the west side of the state. You have to go to Salt Lake City before you, you get to another pediatrics medical residency program. So what Spokane, what Eastern Washington, what the state of Washington are doing today is very, very meaningful. Before we go on, I would like to uh, recognize some of today's speakers. So joining us today is Washington State University's 11th president, Kirk Schultz. Scott O'Brien, Chief of Acute Care Operations and Programs for Providence Central Division. <laughs> Dr. Jim Record, Interim Dean, WSU Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine. <laughs> Dr. Chris Rochelle, Pediatric Emergency Medicine Physician and Residency Program Director Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center and Children's Hospital, and he wrote to many of us. <laughs> John Neal, CEO, Community Cancer Fund. <laughs> and Colleen Fox, Chief Philanthropy Officer, Providence Inland Northwest Foundation. Again, I'll be recognizing some others as we go through the program, so be ready. I'll be calling out your names as we go. But I, but I would like to introduce somebody to you today. Many of you know this individual, but I would like Dr. Capstaffer, Emory, if you would please stand up. So for a pediatrician that began practice, I believe, in 1966 and served Eastern Washington well, this represents fulfillment of a dream and a vision. <laughs> so again, thank you for being here. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to President Kurt Schultz.
Well, good morning and happy birthday today. Today is the 133rd birthday of Washington State University, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate uh, that event uh, than really announcing this pediatric residency partnership today. So how about a big round of applause for WSU, 133 years. Daryl was right there at our founding, so he looks really good for 133. So um, I would, you know, just a couple of acknowledgments of some of the individuals that really did a lot to make this happen. I'd like to ask these uh, two individuals to please stand. Uh, leadership matters, and I think just think we need to acknowledge that as we celebrate all this. So Daryl DeWald, our executive vice president, please stand, and Jim Record, our dean of medicine, please stand. Big round of applause for these two. Daryl had a full head of hair when this started, and uh, it's been a long journey forward. And then finally, I'd also like to acknowledge Nancy Fike and the work that she did uh, as our Chief Development Officer for the Elson S. Boyd College of Medicine. Thank you, Nancy. So I'm excited to announce that Providence and WSU have established a partnership to launch the first pediatric medical residency program in Eastern Washington. Big round of applause for that. I mean, I... As nationwide healthcare demands continue to increase, residency training will help grow a pipeline of physicians committed to ensuring care for our state's rural and underserved communities and beyond. The really service to rural and underserved communities is all part of healthcare and healthcare delivery and health sciences at WSU, whether it's the College of Medicine, College of Pharmacy, Pharmaceutical Sciences, the College of Nursing. That's a shared value that I think we have. And as we make these types of announcements, whether it's medicine, nursing, or pharmacy, we're going to continue to see that focus come into play where we pull in community partnerships, philanthropy, individual efforts and leadership to make a real difference for WSU. Our College of Medicine was founded on a clear set of objectives that has continued to inform the way we operate, educate, and care for our communities. Together we aim to expand access to quality health care, train physicians who will serve the communities they call home, be statewide and community-based, provide an interprofessional education, foster economic development, advanced discovery and research that has a global impact on the science of human health and wellness and forge partnerships with our region's healthcare industry to move healthcare forward for the communities we proudly serve. We are really excited today to announce this program and to celebrate with our partners, but this is our third sponsored residency program uh, for the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine. The first is our family medicine uh, program, I'm sorry, the first is our internal medicine program in Everett. The second is our family medicine program in Pullman, and we, we are welcoming that first set of residents this summer. And this is the third. And as we look to the future, you know, one of my goals as president of WSU, working with our team, is I'd like to see us develop 500 new residency spots by 2035 in the state of Washington. That's an, yeah, there you go. Um, And it's easy to look and say, how are we going to do that? How is that even going to be possible? And if I go back just a few years ago when we didn't have any residency programs yet and we're wor you know, working on establishing the Floyd College of Medicine, I don't think we ever thought we would necessarily be at this particular place. So is it an ambitious, audacious goal? Absolutely. But if we're going to really reform health care in the Pacific Northwest and the state of Washington, these are the types of things that I think we need to be doing, and we're going to be doing them together. How are we going to do that? We're going to do it the same way we did this one. Partnerships with our health care providers, philanthropy, and our community all coming together around a need and watching us uh, do that. So I appreciate the leadership. I appreciate the Community Cancer Fund, Providence, Primera, all the people that have been working over the last couple years to bring this to fruition. I know I met with Jim a couple times when maybe we weren't making the progress we wanted to, and I appreciate the perseverance of all the teams to say, you know what, maybe we have to take a step back and look at something, but we're going to ultimately get there. 
So folks, enjoy today. Enjoy celebrating our 133rd anniversary. Enjoy celebrating our third residency program. But let me tell you this, there are going to be many more, and it's going to be great celebration across the state of Washington. Uh, let me get, before I step down, introduce our next speaker, a go Cougs on the count of three. Even the Huskies in the room, you can do this. You can do it. I know you can. So on the count of three, go Cougs. One, two, three. Go Cougs. And with that, let me welcome Scott O'Brien to the podium. Thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here for this exciting moment. Uh, and it's great to see so many people here eager to figure out how we can meet the needs of the kids in our communities and region. I'm Scott O'Brien. I uh, serve as the lead of operations for Providence's Central Division, which includes our amazing ministries here in the Inland Northwest. Um, on behalf of Providence, we're all very excited to be here. Uh, it's also no shock that after over 130 years working together to take care of these communities, when you get a bunch of Providence physicians and leaders and WSU physicians and leaders together with one goal in mind, amazing things are gonna happen for the communities we serve. So just a huge thank you to our partners at WSU for their steadfast commitment uh, to, the, to the kids in our region and what we can do together. As everybody knows, Providence is a mission-based organization. As part of that mission, we remain steadfast in serving the poor and vulnerable. As we all know, the kids in our communities are vulnerable. They need access to physician visits, immunizations, well-child visits, and from time to time, somewhere to turn when they've become ill. This commitment and partnership together is gonna to make sure that for generations to come, there are physicians in our communities there to meet the needs of those kids when they need access to care, which is really exciting for all of us. Today in healthcare, the number one thing we're worried about, and a day doesn't go by that I don't have a meeting on my calendar talking about workforce. There simply are not enough doctors, nurses, medical assistants, pharmacists, and numerous other roles um, that are a part essential to the care team in existence today to meet the needs of our community. As we look to the future, we know that challenge is even greater and will become more significant. It also is something that no one organization can do on its own. And that's why I'm so excited about this, because it's a great example and model, I think, for our region of how numerous organizations, as Kirk said, be it uh, educational, healthcare, or philanthropic, can come together to solve an identified need. The only way we're gonna have as strong or stronger of a healthcare delivery system as we're fortunate to have in this region 10, 15, 20 years from now is if we come together to find solutions like this. So that's why we at Providence are really excited about this and really excited about everybody who's come together with us on this journey. With that said, today's really about a celebration and I think we'd like to, to acknowledge a number of folks who have been integral to getting us to this day and, and just say thank you from Providence's perspective. Starting with Dr. Chris Rochelle, who's been a, a persistent, ongoing, unwavering, unwilling to say or hear no force to get us to today. So thank you very much, Chris, for everything you've done. Um, and for all the work he's done, the work is just beginning, because now we've got to bring this to life. I'd also like to thank Dr. Mike uh, Barsotti, who leads our children's hospital, Providence Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. He's lent his expertise and voice to this as well. Uh, Dr. Dean Martz, who had the vision of how Providence and WSU could come together more closely to meet the needs of uh, kids in this community. And so thank you, Dean. Uh, we're forever grateful for the role you've played in getting us to today. Dr. T Keith Jorgensen, who's uh, retired as the Chief Executive of Providence Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. I think Keith and Chris cooked this up at some point in the last decade, and, and Keith was really there from the beginning. Thank you, Keith, for, for your leadership. Uh, Susan Stacy, who's our amazing leader uh, and Chief Executive of our ministries here in the Inland Northwest. When Susan and I first got to know each other and worked together, she was accountable for our women's and children's program and brought a passion to that program every day that does not waver today. And her commitment to providing the best care to kids in our region is gonna be essential to making this program successful. So thank you, Susan. And then uh, to our partners at WSU, President Schultz, uh, Dr. DeWall, Dr. Record, thank you for your vision and commitment to what we can do together. And I look, I, I'm honored that we get to announce this together today and look forward to what more we can do on behalf of our communities uh, going forward. Um, and then lastly, residence, residency programs are not cheap. It's not 
it's not easy to uh, put these programs together and make the investment to create the next generation of physicians. So just Colleen's going to talk in a little bit about some of the uh, friends of the Providence Foundation who helped invest in this early on. And then a huge thank you to our friends at the Community Cancer Fund and Primera for coming together and supporting this endeavor as well. One last big thank you to everybody who's gotten us to this day and everybody who's going to help uh, make this successful going forward. And with that, I will hand it over to Dr. Jim Record to share a little bit more. Thanks, Scott. Uh, my name is Jim Record. I'm the interim dean at the College of Medicine, and I can't tell you how delighted I am to be here today. Thomas Jefferson said that health is the first requisite after morality. And I'll admit, um, for me, uh, this feels like a moral obligation uh, to make sure that we ensure the health of our children and our collective future through them. So I couldn't be happier to be part of a team of uh, individuals and organizations that really care about this community and are really willing to make a difference. You know, from its inception, the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine has been dedicated to the proposition of expanding medical education and access to care. Residencies become a critical part of that. Uh, and as we look at residencies, for those that don't know, these are the three to seven year time of training after medical school uh, where one learns to be an independent practitioner in a particular area, such as pediatrics. And as we look to expand medical education, what we know is that getting folks here to do the medical education is one step. And, uh, Typically, that's about a third of folks who come in for medical school wind up staying in the area. Um, and that number doubles when you can have folks train uh, during medical school and afterwards. And so what's important to know is this program is really part of a general strategy to ensure that we are having greater results in bringing and keeping physicians in this area. And so for us, it means greater experiences for our medical students to create interest, uh, to ensure that we've got the connections with the community that start early and continue, not just through their medical training, but through their residency training, and you know, really gets to that point of our mission, which is to improve the access and the quality of care. So for us, I, I will say, it is amazing to have such dedicated partners. Um, just want to thank Providence, Primera, Community Cancer Fund, it, and so many other donors and, and future donors in the audience, of course. <laughs> uh, I completely agree with how much it costs to run a residency program. It is a challenge and it needs to be a community effort, so I'll just thank you in advance. Um, but, you know, for us, it is all about the kids here and uh, we are just so excited for all the work uh, and for those pediatricians who for decades have been being the clarion call uh, for the health of the kids in this area. I am just so happy to be able to say that uh, this dream is being realized. So with that, I would like to introduce our program director for the pediatrics uh, residency program, the one who will oversee all operations. He is a emergency medicine physician of 20 years, 18 of which have uh, been here at Sacred Heart and the Children's Hospital. Uh, it is, uh, I, I can't say enough uh, uh, or agree enough with what's said before, is his dedication has been a driving force in making sure that this dream is realized. Uh, and so with that, please uh, give a warm welcome to Dr. Chris Rochelle. Thanks, everyone. Um, in 2004, I came to Spokane on an interview, and Peggy Mondrasina, one of the directors of the Children's Hospital at the time, was taking me on a tour, and she pointed out an area where people were smoking outside the emergency department and said, someday, there'll be an ER there. And so she was right. Um, it did. It happened. And one of the other things she said is that there'll be a PEDS residency program in Spokane. And just to clarify, I'm not the one who, um, who started this or dreamt this up. I, I took the baton over, and a lot of people did a lot of hard work on this. So 
Deb Harper, Kim Grandinetti, and Chris Anderson were three of the people before me who were working on this. Um, yeah. So I just want to go off script just a tiny bit for a little clarification, because some people just think that pediatricians just give shots in the clinic and that's what they do. So ACGME is the governing body that oversees residency programs and making sure that they're actually doing the right thing and taking care of the residents and that everything's on the up and up. So they just came out with a um, proposal for a new curriculum and as a part of that, they came out with a new description of what the pediatric subspecialty is. It's a little bit verbose, so bear with me. It's a little bit repetitive, so bear with me. Pediatricians are physicians who provide comprehensive, patient-centered, preventative, acute, and chronic care for the growing and developing child from birth through the transition to adult care. They care for the whole patient, having knowledge to recognize and manage common childhood and adolescent medical, psychosocial, and behavioral issues. Pediatricians' practice is characterized by flexibility and adaptability. A good pediatrician has broad-based knowledge, strong critical thinking skills, and the flexibility to practice in a wide variety of settings and circumstances. Pediatricians have the skills to initially manage and to recognize the need to refer to higher levels of care as appropriate. Pediatricians provide consultation to others, formulate questions for consultating subspecialists, and co-manage children with chronic or complex physical and mental health problems. Pediatricians are advocates for children. They have a strong presence within communities where they promote health and health equity in ways that build public trust in the profession. In their interaction with others, they exhibit cultural humility and empathy. They are grounded in principles of social justice, advocate for underserved populations, and seek to eliminate disparities in care. They are collaborative leaders who lead by example and practice interprofessional, team-based care. Pediatricians communicate effectively with patients patients, families, treatment teams, communities, and within healthcare systems. We're almost done. <laughs> As self-directed, lifelong learners, pediatricians stay current and advanced with emerging technologies. They understand and collaboratively navigate and changing business aspects of medicine. Pediatricians utilize data management science to inform patient care, resulting in high-value patient-centered care, continuous quality improvement, and equitable and ethical service delivery. Pediatricians partner and connect with colleagues, team members, and patients, optimizing both their own and their team's well-being. They find meaning, joy, and purpose by capably caring for patients and are equipped, educated, and trained to lead and manage teams. The pediatrician's coordination of care extends beyond the end of life, include grief and bereavement management. The discipline is characterized by a collaborative compassion, cognitive, scholarly, and relationship-oriented approach to comprehensive patient care. So I apologize for looking down, but that wasn't something I was going to memorize for this this morning. And it really makes pediatricians seem like superheroes, which in my eyes they are. When I came to Spokane, there was a lot of amazing pediatricians like Dr. Capstaff who's here today and a lot of others who had an amazing wealth of, of knowledge. And pediatricians have learned to adapt. There's a lot of change. When I first started out with my career in pediatrics, the, the, my, um, my uh, faculty pretty much said, to be a good pediatrician, you need to learn infectious disease. Well, now to be a good pediatrician, you need to learn mental health, behavior development, adolescent medicine, and a whole other host of, of different knowledges that were not originally part of, of where pediatricians started. So just, um, I've acknowledged a few of the pediatricians who did this before me. Um, in 2019, the Children's Foundation um, started a grant to help me get working on developing some things. I got hired by the Spokane Teaching Health Center to, to do a big push for this. And we had a major hurdle at that time. I mean, there's been lots of ups and downs, but I thought that this probably would have been the end of things. And it could have been. And Tracy Couture came in as the interim executive director. And if she did not keep the dream alive and help find financing and work on a grant to keep me in that role, it may have been the end of things. Not to say there would have never been a residency program, but I think we would have still been decades out and it was decades in the making. So definitely want to acknowledge Tracy this morning. So I was told there's a trap door if I go on any longer. I have two to three minutes to speak. I'm an ER doctor, I wear scrubs. I took longer to think about what I was gonna wear today than you know, time to speak, but thank you very much. There's a lot of people that I should be thanking up here. The problem is I don't have enough time and I am fearful I'm gonna leave someone out. 
So again, rather than thank you for everybody for what's been done, I'm gonna just thank everybody for all the hard work that is yet to come. Because my previous things I've said is that this takes a village. So this is not just me, this is not just Providence, it's not just WSU. This is actually the whole community of Spokane. We're relying on everybody, all the different clinics to educate the residents. And I was asked why do we need a residency? Well, I just told you what a pediatrician is. And in order to teach, you need to know your stuff. So it really ups the ante that everybody does better and the care will be better when we have this residency program. So thank you. In addition, we've seen the Community Cancer Fund team really step in, so it's my pleasure to introduce their CEO, John Neal. Thank you very much, Daryl. I have some prepared remarks uh, that I'll get to, uh, but just um, I'm in a new role uh, with Community Cancer Fund, and so have begun uh, the introduction to the medical community the healthcare system that we have here locally, and I'm, I'm moved by it. And just to be with this group here today and to see uh, the emotion, uh, to see the dedication and commitment uh, is, is staggering. Uh, and it's a joy uh, to be able to see uh, this group coming together. Uh, Dr. Capstaffer, who began today's uh, press conference with a clenched fist in the air, I recognize the long runway that it's taken to get here. And that I am so appreciative. We had uh, uh, the outstanding opportunity to work with all the community partners, uh, Washington State University in particular. President Schultz, you have an amazing team. Uh, to be uh, surrounded by these individuals um, and to hear the spirit has just been uh, wonderful. Um, I'm a Pullman kid, born and raised. I have crimson and gray that flows through the the veins, even though I went to a school that's right across the river here, um, still it's a homecoming of sort. Um, I've had the good fortune of working with Terry Kelly, uh, too, as part of this process. Uh, and so I, um, I love the cougar spirit that we have going through here, uh, as well as, as community. At Community Cancer Fund, our mantra is local, it's community, it's dynamic. Uh, and when I look at what we've constructed here, it hits all the pillars um, of what we stand for at Community Cancer Fund. Uh, my prepared remarks on behalf of Community Cancer Fund and its board of directors, it's an honor and privilege uh, to be here. Uh, this is a trailblazing program uh, that will undoubtedly save lives. Uh, Community Cancer Fund, we pride ourselves in seeking out partnerships that alter the landscape for healthcare that are innovative and dare to do things that no one or no institution has ever done before. And we seek out tremendous partners. We seek out tremendous collaborators uh, who are willing to do the same. And this program will change the health ecosystem, is to bring the very best healthcare to Spokane. Establishing a pediatric residency program is a next level moment for Spokane. We'll train the very best doctors here in Spokane. Our local patients will benefit, including the children who are battling cancer that are near and dear to our hearts. And also puts us in the best position to be able to retain these very, very talented physicians right here in, in Spokane. We are so fortunate, and I, I raise uh, a point that all of us already know, but that we are introducing to the nation, if not the, of the world, that we have an, an incredible and outstanding medical community here. And today's pediatric residency program is one more way that we're cementing our identity and our reputation as a center for medical excellence right here in the Pacific Northwest. Patients and our loved ones will benefit from this program and reap its benefits for years and years to come. On behalf of all of us at Community Cancer Fund and on behalf of all the incredible donors that we're able to work with, thank you so much. And with that, I would like to introduce Colleen Fox uh, to the podium.
Well, it's wonderful to be with everyone this morning. And as the seventh and final speaker, I know my primary job is to be brief. So I will just say that on behalf of Providence Inland Northwest Foundation, our board of directors, it's truly an honor to be part of this historic announcement this morning, especially as we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of Sacred Heart Children's Hospital in our community and an unwavering commitment to pediatric health. It's been well over five years since Dr. Keith Georgeson approached my predecessor about a vision to build a pediatric residency program. And thanks to the generosity of a couple of key donors who wish to remain anonymous, as well as donations through our Children's Miracle Network Hospital partners, we were able to say yes and support the great work of Dr. Rochelle in helping bring this program to fruition. We have been honored to work collaboratively with wonderful partners like the Community Cancer Fund, Spokane Teaching Health Clinic, and WSU to bring this program to fruition. And we would not be here today without the role of philanthropy. So to all of our donors and our supporters in this community, thank you for being a part of this. And as a mother, I wanna say at the end of the day, this is all about the kids who will benefit because of this incredible work. So thank you all. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you for being here. I would like to just uh, say a few names, so bear with me. Many of you know who, who you are, but I do want to just have you think about it because I'm gonna ask this, this group, this crowd, to think of it, what can I do for this residency and others? So I would like to, I hope, honor Susan, Dean, Scott, Joel, Molly, Kara, Jim, Nancy, Margaret, Kirk, the College of Medicine team, you've been amazing. Rich Hadley, Marty Dickinson, Tracy Couture, Chris, Ken, Mike, amazing physician leaders, David, Ryan, John, Fritz, thank you. I've left folks out, but I want you to understand this will take a team, it'll be great, but let's have your advocacy and step up. So this does conclude our time today, the formal part. We do wish that you will hang around for a little while. And because it's been five years since I put this crazy crimson jacket on, <laughs> If anybody would like to come up with First Lady Noel Schultz and uh, President Schultz and get a picture with these crimson jackets on, you're welcome to do so. But again, I'll bring it back to 133 years. And when we met recently with the Prov leadership, we were astounded by our legacy and our commitment and our overlapping missions and our vision together. And it just struck me that we're, we're a good partner pair. So, like Kirk did on three of Go Cougs and, and muscle into it, let's make it loud. One, two, three, Go Cougs! Thanks, folks. <laughs>